thanks for coming. Um, this is the uh, first time I've, I've spoken about this in a couple of years. I did a short lightning talk about two years ago, so uh, happy to have the chance to talk about this project. Um, this is a project I've been working on for a little over four years. Um, I, the repo started, I think, in March of 2011. I made it public a little over a year after that. Uh, it's basically uh, me learning Scala in public. Um, so, uh, as, a, as a part of that journey, um, at some point, uh, you know, learn that category theory is something that you should, you should aim for as a functional programmer. Um, that that's kind of one of the end stages. Um, but I started to realize, uh, I just went to uh, Vlad Petrushev's uh, talk on intuitionistic type theory. I've been to a number of his category theory meetups in the Bay Area, and every single one of them is well over my head. Um, but I, I started to realize that that was because there is actually this, this uh, all these other milestones in between what most of my computer science education was, um, comes from chapter one of, this is a table of contents from an abstract algebra textbook. Um, and it, in computer science, uh, yeah, maybe you also get some regular expressions and, and context-free grammars, that sort of thing. And uh, of course, you know, vector spaces, matrices, and lattices come up every now and then, but not necessarily in a very rigorous way. Um, but discovering abstract algebra as a subject um, gave me some, some faith that maybe there was actually a, a path or a roadmap to get to category theory at some point. Um, and of course, one of the first stops on that journey are, are monoids. Um, I, I remember Heiko Sieberger uh, asked at Scala Days in 2011, you know, how, how can I learn all this stuff? And his, his uh, honest answer was, learn Haskell. Um, so I, I took that to heart, got the Learn Your Haskell book, uh, spent some time with that, and uh, Monoids uh, gave me the first, um, first foothold in, in his journey towards uh, increasing abstractions. Um, and also, uh, Nick Partridge has a great <coughs> video, it's up on Vimeo, where he he starts with uh, summing a list of integers, and he derives in something like 17 easy steps, um, half a dozen type classes, including monoid. Um, but it's a great, uh, it's a, the syntax is a little out of date, but it's a great uh, hands-on way of, of, of understanding um, where these things come from. Uh, and of course, after monoids, um, there's all this abstract algebra stuff. The first hint I had of that in the Scala ecosystem was algebra in 2012. Um, seeing Oscar Boyk and Sam Ritchie uh, get abstract algebra running in large distributed systems was really inspiring. And then a few months later at NE Scala in Philadelphia, uh, Tom Switzer gave the Life After Monoids talk, uh, which is available on YouTube, uh, where he talks about fields, groups, rings, and other patterns from abstract algebra and how they're actually useful in day-to-day -day programming. Um, and then Adobe Chang, who's here today, <coughs> I also gave a great talk uh, last August at uh, Scala by the Bay. We talked about Curry Howard isomorphism, the deep correspondence between functional programming and logic. Um, that you know, once once they start finding these things, it, it's, these are these are concrete, uh, actionable um, projects that, and, and concrete syntax that, that really help towards the uh, towards the goal of, of category theory and, and subjects like that. Um, I won't dwell on this too long, but um, these are all just definitions pulled from Wikipedia of, of a lot of these uh, patterns from abstract algebra. And many of them we can find um, examples for just in looking at uh, the, the integers. So integer addition uh, is an example of, of several of these things. A ring, uh, um, uh, addition and multiplication of square matrices uh, is a ring. Uh, field um, requires a division, so we can look to the reals or the rationals. Um, and vector spaces, uh, if you're somewhat familiar to most folks. Um, so the goals of, of this project, the first one is to cover a diverse set of algorithms. So I'm not working at the level of, of Spire or CATS uh, myself directly, but I, I want to understand those things. And so in order to do that, I want to cover a, a wide range of algorithms. Um, so I'm pulling examples from the last couple decades of, of coursework, computer science, or, or otherwise anything that involves in programming. So that's natural language processing, bioinformatics, statistics, subjects like that. Um, and the diversity of platforms also is also an important goal. So um, in the middle there, where a lot of, this is a, a selected uh, set of depends on uh, uh, relations um, from my project as parts of the, uh, related parts of the ecosystem. So in the middle um, is the, the axle core. Uh, and that's just some 
type classes, um, like functor and that sort of thing. Uh, Axel core only depends on spire and uh, discipline. Discipline, uh, we heard earlier today uh, in the cat's talk, um, it's just a way to organize some of the, the scholar check properties uh, that define the type classes. Um, so I'm trying to keep the, the, the set of dependencies small for maximum core. And uh, then the algorithms, the natural language processing, all that sort of thing is coming, uh, is, is also, it's just depending on Axel core. Um, and I've got some games defined. Um, and uh, so for instance, um, the, so Axel algorithms, there are many, there's many algorithms that require um, a, a matrix uh, to, to, to be implemented. So linear regression or, or a Lederstein distance. Uh, is, is expressed in terms of matrix operations. Uh, but I don't actually have any concrete uh, matrix implementation in Axel Core or, or anywhere in the class path. Uh, but what I do have is a, uh, a small jar called Axel JBLOS, which is just a set of witnesses uh, for, the, for the, a linear algebra type class and some other uh, type classes. Um, so it, 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 in, to make a, a concrete um, you know, deployable piece of software, uh, in terms of Axel, you would just include JBLOS, include Axel Core, Axel Algorithms, and the little shim that is Axel JBLOS, which is the, the type of class uh, witnesses. Um, a couple of other things about the left-hand side of this chart. Um, I, I, I gather that uh, both Algebraid and Spire will both be factored in terms of this project called Algebra at some point soon, and that CATS already is. Um, so, at some point, I would actually love to get rid of Axel Core and just depend on, on uh, these kinds of uh, fundamental uh, libraries. Um, and then over on the right, uh, I'll just point out that um, I would also love to get this stuff running in a distributed fashion, uh, for instance, on Spark. So I've begun a few months ago defining type class witnesses for, uh, for RDDs, for the Spark, so resilient distributed data sets. Uh, things like functor. So a Spark RDD has a map function, um, so why not define a, a functor um, for an RDD? Um, and then the, the, the last priority I'll, I'll mention for the, the, uh, the project is documentation. Um, so here we have a, a, a little bit of documentation from, um, from, the, from the Kingman's clustering algorithm. Uh, and I, I saw that that was mentioned earlier. Um, uh, I would love to start using something like that. I was just speaking to Rob earlier. If I could get taught, uh, embedding the images produced by some of this code, uh, that would be the, the last little feature I need. Um, so trying to you know, get to the point where I can basically just cut and paste any, any of the documentation in a REPL. And, and, uh, and that should, should aid in the, in the adoption and the, in the clarity of the code. Um, some of the other things, of course, I want this stuff to be correct complete, fast, and, and I also want to provide access to a diverse uh, a number of, of data sets. But, um, you know, it's, it's just me, uh, so, so some of these things are, are sort of lower priority. There is, uh, there are, there is a test suite, um, there's a lot more work to be done there. Uh, I haven't really focused much on speed at all. I'm trying to build on nice, uh, you know, fast components, uh, but the, the blue code that I'm writing has not uh, been tested so much in terms of, of speed. Um, so here are the, here's some, some ways to get in touch with me. I'd love to hear what you think about the project. I'm also now going to, going to show a few examples just in the Scholar worksheet of how this stuff works. Um, so here we go. I'll try to. Uh, So um, the first area where these, uh, these abstract algebra patterns made sense uh, was in this units of measurement uh, part of the library. So um, and this, this, uh, this part of the library has seen probably the most change over the last few years. Um, and in hindsight, it makes a lot of sense that we can use abstract algebra to, 
to apply to the units of measurement library. Because in the end, we're just taking quantities um, and we're, we're, we're tagging them with, with units, uh, but we're doing we're supporting all the same mathematical operations that, uh, that the reals we have, for instance. Um, so uh, one one interesting thing that's different about this from a lot of other units of measurement libraries is that the units themselves are not represented as types. Uh, but rather, the, the thing that's being measured, like mass or distance or time, that's represented in the type system. Um, so, uh, let's see. And also, I'll mention I've got a little show type class um, that allows me to pre print these things. So, here we have an example of uh, two grams. Um, the, the examples here are all just uh, from mass. Um, and then, here's where some of the spire comes in. Um, I think typically uh, you would just import spire dot implicits dot underscore pull in a bunch of syntactic sugar um, for the purposes of this talk. Um, I'm being really explicit, and uh, also I, I found from time to time it can lead to some ambiguities if you just pull everything in. So generally, I'll, I'll pull in just the syntax uh, that I need. So with the additive semigroup, I can I can perform addition on on uh, units of, of mass. Here. So 10 grams plus uh, a kilogram is uh, 1.01 kilograms, and I've got to choose which unit to express the result in, so I choose the right-hand side, just arbitrarily doing that. Um, with the group ops, uh, that gives me a subtraction, so the same two quantities uh, uh, subtracted gives me a negative kilogram, example, uh, negative kilogram quantity, and there's an in function which allows me to convert. Um, and if I were to try to convert this to uh, feet or something like that that would make sense, I would get a compiled error. Let's see. And the, the implementation, it, it's very simple. Um, again, I'm not super focused on performance just yet. Um, so these things are just case classes. They have a magnitude and a unit. And they have two type parameters. One is the, 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 the thing that's being measured, mass, distance, time. And the other is the number, uh, <coughs> the magnitude type. Uh, so in this case, um, you know, I can just I can, I can write a function that takes a unit of quantity, and assuming I, I know how to show the number type, um, I can show the unit of quantity. And uh, I can I can actually also um, create unit quantities on on number types like like something random like a, a cat. Um, so uh, we've got this cat case class. I can define a witness for show. Got a couple cats here. These are my cats. Um, and I can uh, prove that, that the show works. And now I can say uh, Cody, who's a cat, Cody Grams. Um, and now this function that I wrote up here uh, does the right thing. Um, but because I don't have a field defined on cats, um, I can't pass it to any to a function like like foo. I can't um, I can't uh, convert cats from from one unit to another. Um, in this example, I'm simply uh, doing addition, but uh, what I, I described earlier, the, uh, there's actually conversion potentially that has to happen during addition. So that's why um, even addition requires a field on the number type um, and, uh, and the, this converter uh, for, uh, for that, uh, that quantum and that, and that number type. So, I do have a field defined on doubles, and so this expression here works fine. Okay, We've got a couple more examples I wanted to show. Um, this one is uh, an edit distance, Levenstein distance. Um, who, who here is familiar with uh, with Levenstein distance from natural language processing? Um, I've got. I can show just briefly the. Wikipedia does a good job. Um, basically, builds a matrix using one string uh, down down the left hand side, another string um, up top, and it, it fills in from from top left to to lower right. Uh, and at the end, the value in the bottom right is the edit distance between the two strings. Um, so, most implementations of this don't they, they'll mention that it's you know they'll call the function a distance, but they're not really formally um, treating it as a distance. So um, I'll, I'll show, I'll work up to, to what that, that means in a bit, but um, 
here we don't actually need a full linear algebra on this because we're just filling in values, but I'll, I'll create one anyways. Um, uh, it's a superset of what I need for this. And I'll create a, a uh, space uh, object. I'll make that implicitly available. <coughs> and this thing can answer questions like the distance between the two strings. So you see here, uh, this string on the right is missing the C, and this one has is is got the wrong vowel, so that's a kind of distance of two. Um, this one has got the right vowel, but still is missing a C, so that's a distance of one. And these are the identical strings, so they have a distance of zero. Um, and then if I import the syntactic sugar from Spire um, that allows me to, to use this infix distance operation, I can, I can create expressions like this, um, which gets, makes it feel a little bit more like, a, like an actual PSL. Um, and the nice thing about having defined it as a metric space is that I can test that this thing obeys all of the, the laws that the government metric spaces like the triangle inequality. Um, so any, any distance between uh, two points uh, should be shorter than if we have to drop through some other point. Um, so that gets tested. And the last thing I'll, I'll show is a, um, a little demo about uh, of, of a Spark application of this stuff to Spark. Um, this, is a, this is a fairly contrived example, but this is the uh, Monte Carlo estimation of pi <coughs> algorithm that comes from the Spark uh, documentation. Um, basically, it just says if you have a, a random number, number generator, it can generate numbers between 0 and 1. Generate two of those um, for, to represent a point on, on unit square, and then you, compu you can compute uh, what share of those uh, fell within the unit circle that was centered in the lower left. Um, so, and then you just do that, the more times you do that, the more accurate your estimation of pi is. Um, but the, the difference in this version here is that uh, the number of trials, which in the, in the Spark documentation, that's just an RDD where the size of the RDD is equal to the number of trials. So I've, I've abstracted out the RDD-ness of that example and said that all I, all I need of that thing, uh, be it an RDD or whatever, uh, is that it's a functor and that I can perform aggregations on it and that it has a size. Here, yeah, this is the finiteness, the false size, this is the functorness, and then uh, inside of the sigma is the ability to do uh, to do aggregations, distributed aggregations. Um, so what I've got, uh, let me actually switch this out. Of the common scholar collections, I'll define uh, as you get, as you get it. Yeah. And that's actually, I, I noticed that Spire had a, um, this came out of wanting to use Spire's Unicode Sigma uh, on parallel, uh, on parallel uh, sequences. And so I, I looked at it and, and noticed that it was implemented initially in terms of bold. So I, I implemented it in terms of aggregate, submitted that. I then got to thinking, well, what would it take to run that uh, on, on uh, Spark? So that's where this came out of. I, I think um, your notebook, you got that serialization because of what the, the, the closure you captured. So initially, I commented out the, the, the Spark uh, stuff initially for this run. So this is uh, estimating pi using a, a parallel sequence to represent the trials. We get something 2.5. Um, and if I comment this out and replace it with uh, an RDD, um, I'll turn for a while. And this is just running locally, uh, but it's but it is Spark, and uh, here we can see that we, we get another estimate. Of pi. Uh, and there is some serialization baked into the, the bunker with this, so it'll serialize the, the aggregation operator. So I've got a few other examples I could show, but I may uh, cap it at that and just take a few questions at this point. Did you say that you have defined a functor for RDD? Or you, or I that's have. on your list? Yeah, no, that's that's in there. That's that's how did you how did you deal with the type tag? Um, so I, I I pull it along. Uh, I don't have a good workaround for that. So it's a functor plus. Uh, 
class tax, yeah. which I'd love to have a workaround for that, but uh, as far as I know, there's not a good one. Yeah. I, I think this is really great, and like I don't know why I didn't find out. Like I have looked um, a lot for, for, for this kind of stuff, and uh, I'm really surprised that. Like, do you think it would make sense to do some kind of community site so you could like find stuff? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to hear suggestions about that. I mean, I've been really just sort of working on this in private. Um, I haven't really done much marketing, but uh, I know you know Spark has some new community um, community efforts, uh, advertising for that community. Um, yeah, whatever you think, I would love to talk about. I was okay. thinking more like for scouting, you know, because yeah, like, yeah. I, I think like people who either on Zoom for them is like really awesome for them, and like they're most of the time like isolated and like yeah. And if we could have more like a centralized way to oversee like all the structure. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, these conferences are one one way to, to do that, but uh, this doesn't scale that way. Anything else? Or, um, yeah, there's some fun visualization stuff in there. Check out, um, I'll, I'll leave the contact information out. But also some fun visualization stuff too, I'll just leave with this. Uh, so this was tweeted a while ago, this is the age of distribution of land and the NDs. So I've got stuff in there for you know, bar charts and uh, time series, and some of which can be animated, um, that's done with ACA. So, yeah, I'd love to hear if you guys have any thoughts. Uh, <coughs>